This is a 3D printed print in place hint. Print in place is one of the most exciting capabilities of a 3D printer. However, these type of designs are often done in more advanced CAD software, such as Fusion 360. I wanted to show how you can make this simple design in a basic CAD software, such as Tinkercad, even if you're a complete beginner. Imagine in designing an object that once you 3D print, exhibits motion and function immediately with absolutely no assembly required. It just pops out of your 3D printer working. What are the benefits of this? Well, it saves time and it really impresses other people. Our hinge will be crafted by designing two half spheres that snugly fit into slightly larger half spheres recessed inside the part. Why spheres and not rods, you ask? Well, it comes down to the 3D printing process. Spheres tend to be much easier to 3D print without experiencing issues such as drooping due to their minimalized overhang. The first step is to build the basic link in a chain. And this is made of a bunch of different boxes, as you can see here. You'll notice with this link, there is some space here. And there has to be for it to rotate. How much space you decide? It's up to you. One strategy for actually creating that space and making it even is if you've noticed here, I have this extra block. And this block I have placed here is a little bit bigger than the width of this. And that's what helps me control how much larger this gap is. In this case, it's 11 millimeters and this was 10 millimeters. So it's one millimeter split two ways, that's half a millimeter on either side. I could have made it bigger, could have made it smaller. Once I do that, how did I get these other blocks lined up to that? Well, first of all, with this block, I needed to first make sure it's centered, and it is. Now, to put these blocks there, what I did is I used the plane tool, snapped it, and I dropped it on. Then I did that on the other side, dropped it on. Then I put the work plane back on the bottom and then I hold shift and select all three objects and click align. And then I select this box so it doesn't move, the one in the middle there, and I line them all up like that. And now I have that gap. So how are we going to connect these two links of our print in place hinge together? Well, you may have noticed these two pink bumps. These are two half spheres that I dragged onto the basic link model. They are going to fit into the half sphere recesses I'm about to design in our next step to connect the links together. How to make the holes slightly bigger and make sure they're aligned still. The way I did it is I selected this, duplicated it, brought it over here. Now I'm going to group this so it's one piece now. So you may be thinking, well, why don't you just group this and turn it into a hole and place it where you want? The problem is, these holes would not be big enough. In other words, they'd be the exact same size and it wouldn't rotate when you printed it out. I'm gonna ungroup this and I'm gonna make these bigger. When you make it bigger, make sure you make it bigger in all directions. So I'm gonna make it 3.5 by 3.5. And often people forget the depth, which is two, and I'm gonna change that to 2.5. There's space all around. Now, when you make it bigger, it's not in the same position as it was before. Where that really matters is up and down, but it is great to have it in the same position as you had it before exactly, because then when you put the hole in, you can make sure there's enough space to rotate. So how do you do that? Well, I haven't changed this piece, so I can use this piece to align this sphere. So I click on this, hold shift, click a line and then click on the original piece so that doesn't move and say center this way and center up and down. Now I know this bigger one moved in relation to that and it's perfectly centered. And then you do the same trick here. You can either duplicate that and flip it or you can resize it and use this one to align it. In this case, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to bring it over here, make sure it's zero. 
I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to use the work plane, move it there and then drop it. Now the old one was there and that's okay because I'm going to group it. It should be lined, but I might've messed up. So I'm going to check. I'm going to hold shift, click a line, click on this and everything is gray, which means it's lined up. Then when I group it and turn it into a hole, I can move it in here and I can see exactly how much space I have over here to rotate and where I actually want to put it and line it up and group it. I got my holes perfectly lined up. All right, that's a basic print in place hinge mechanism. Once you have a basic link for your chain, you just have to connect them together to make it as long or as short as you want click on this basic link, hit duplicate, and then I'm going to use the left arrow key to shift it over. Now, how do I know when to stop and when it's lined up? Well, if I click on this original link and make it transparent, you can do that by hitting T or coming up here and hitting transparent. You can see through it. And if I orbit around and zoom in, I can look to see how the circles line up. Wow. That was a really good eyeball. So you notice the bigger circle, which is the recess, is lined up with the bump. And what you're looking for is these two circles to be lined up. Now, if I click on this and move it with the arrow keys, you can see it's off, off that way. Perfect here. If it's not perfect and it's jumping around, you can come down to snap grid here. And instead of having it move one millimeter every time you hit an arrow key, you could do 0.1. And I can do that here to line up even better than it is. I'm gonna click back here, click T, transparent. I can duplicate this whole thing. Select, duplicate, shift the whole thing back. You notice because I did 0.1, it takes a long time. So I'm gonna move it back to one millimeter to get it in place roughly. Again, click here, make sure it's transparent. Orbit around. It's not exactly the way I want, so I'm going to click here. Hold shift, click that one too. You can even group those now that they're done, to be honest, which would probably be the best approach. And then I can go back to 0.1 millimeters and make sure it's lined up exactly the way I want. Make this solid again and group the whole thing together. Well, let's say you want the ends clean. Well, that's easy enough. You can use a hole. What you can do is take a hole, line it up where you want on this side, take another hole and line it up where you want on this side, cutting off the parts you don't want. Select the whole thing, group it, and there you go. There's your chain. As you can see, you can do a complicated design, such as a print in place in Tinkercad. Are there still some more complicated designs that I would rather do in a more advanced parametric software such as Fusion 360 or Onshape? Definitely. But Tinkercad is a great way to start learning 3D design for 3D printing and you can do some advanced things. That's why we created a course around toys on learning 3D design for 3D printing that teaches you how to use Tinkercad for 3D printing. And you can find it at our website, which is down below at makeshiftedtech.com. Check it out. Help support us. Until next time, take the time to learn and create every day. Mm.